What's up legends? I just wanted to add this bonus video to walk you through a funnel that has been finished and actually show you my real behind the scenes funnel steps and automation for this exact workshop that you're watching because this might actually help you understand uh, the more bigger picture of all of the different steps. Sometimes when you see that finished product, it's easier for you to then understand how you're gonna go and use all these ingredients to make a recipe of your own. Now, I also want to very, uh, just go back to in the main workshop that you've just watched, there was also a little bit of a rush at the end because of timing for the workshop finishing. So I just wanted to also just go back to where you add your products if you've chosen the funnel checkout option as your sales option. Um, I was in such a rush at the end there that um, I didn't show you the right place where you add your products. So I'm also going to be doing that in this bonus video today. So what I'm going to do first of all is actually show you my funnel for this particular course that you are watching right now. So inside your websites and funnels, um, you're gonna click on the funnel section. One of the ways that I always find my most recent funnels I've been working on is by clicking the clock and it will bring up the last thing that you were editing or working on. Alternatively, you can use the search bar here to go and look for any of the funnels that you're trying to find. But I'm gonna open up my funnel and you will now recognize this kind of scene. And I'm gonna take you through some of the main features in a funnel area. The first thing I want to to point out to you is that here inside your funnel steps basically represent the different pages, simple web pages that you have and what order people would move through them in. So we would normally in a very typical funnel have a page that's a sales page. After that would be then a page that has maybe the checkout area embedded into it. So this is just a page with a checkout on. And then the final page that you might have in a sequence of pages like this, which is called a funnel, is perhaps the woohoo, thank you, congratulations, you're in page. So typically this is called a thank you page. Um, now these can keep going on and on and on and on. All these are guys are web pages put in a particular sequence or order that you would like people to move through them in. All right, so let's just get our head around that bit. So in here, um, you can add different steps, which means just add another page into another order. Um, inside the Black Friday template I've provided you, that one only has a design for you to play with in the first initial sales page area. And the next pages I believe you have are sort of place held there, but there's nothing particularly in the pages um, as such that you, you've got to go in and, and have a play with those to design them how you want them, depending on the steps that you want in your funnel. So with that in mind, when we're on our sort of first main page here, we've got a main menu that uh, affect, these are settings that affect the entire funnel sequence altogether. Then when you click on each of these pages, you have other settings that affect that particular web page only. So you've got settings for the whole funnel sequence and you've got settings for each individual page. Now, when we went to adding products to a funnel page in the main workshop video, um, I was actually in the page itself and was trying to add it to the actual checkout inside the page. You actually need to come out of the page editor back to this main menu for instance, here I have my page that I've built with my checkout on it. It's not actually inside the checkout in the page builder itself that you add your product. It's actually in the page settings of the funnel step. So I'm now on the page that has my checkout on it. You go to products for that particular page are saying what products are matched up to this page? What products should people have the option to be able to buy if a checkout appears on this page? Making sense? <laughs> so all you're gonna do here is press add a product and you're gonna choose then from all of the products that you have that you've added to either your courses area or your payments and products section. They will all show here. Most of these that I have are products that are inside my courses area, but these will show here as well if they have been added to your payments and products section there. Now I'm gonna cancel this one because I'm not adding anything else to this particular checkout. 
I've added one earlier. I'm going to open this up for you by pressing edit because I just want to show you a couple of the settings that I have. So for this particular course that you guys have purchased and are watching right now, I've selected this course that you're now watching. The course is inside the courses area, so it showed up in my products. Simply selected it. Now it will say, what's the price? Well, that price will match whatever price you've put in either that courses offers area or in the payments products area when you create created the product itself. So by selecting the name of the product, it's automatically going to pull in whatever price you set for that product in the payments products area. Cool. With me so far? Of course we are. <laughs> then you can choose what you want the price display override to look like. What do we mean by that? So I've not just put a price. I've actually also included a little tip for them to get a coupon, to add in a coupon code. Now, by the way, by giving people a coupon code at the checkout, you dramatically increase your conversion rates. Some of you may have saw that when you bought this course and thought, is she crazy? I would have been willing to pay full price for this. And then she went and threw a 50% coupon in. She just lost herself some money, the silly fool. Well, <laughs> actually the very opposite happens when it comes to consumer psychology. When somebody sees or believes that they're getting a massive deal, they will be more than uh, twice as likely to make that purchase. So by adding uh, the coupon code <laughs> in the price box, um, you do dramatically increase your chances of people purchasing that product. And I'll just show you what that looks like. I'm going to pull over the page itself here. This is the public page. Um, so if I scroll down to my actual buy button, so see here, this is step one of my funnel, which is the sales page. Then when they click to buy, it takes them instantly to the second step of the funnel. And I will in a moment show you how you make this bit happen, okay? But I'm gonna press this button. What's happened behind the scenes is now take them to step two of Sarah's funnel, which is a page that has a checkout embedded in it. Cool. So Sarah has now um, got this little checkout. She's filled in her details. Go to step two. Now, why do we want a two-step checkout? Because now the system has my email address and my name. So if I do now abandon cart, guess what? You already have the lead, even though I didn't buy. And you can now turn on an abandoned cart sequence behind the scenes so that it can follow up with me and offer me an incentive to come back and finish that purchase. Now, what you'll see here, here's the price. Here's that price we're talking about. The price of the product that I have connected to this second step, because that second step is the second page in my funnel. It's the page that has the checkout embedded. We've gone to the products part and we've told the system because there's a checkout on this particular page, this is the product we want to sell. And the price display, I've added in that extra note, which is that extra note there. See how cool that is? So even if they've missed that I've applied a coupon code option here, I've actually put it in the checkout itself. So let's see if our, if our coupon works, BF24, apply. And I will also show you where you pop that coupon, where you create that coupon as well. So boom, it's now given this customer almost 50% off. They're thinking, well, hey, what a bargain. They're going to be so much more likely to now go ahead and buy rather than abandoning cart. <laughs> Excellent. So there we have the second stage of my offer. Now, what happens when they press enroll now or buy now or purchase? You can change that call to action right there. Um, what happens is they will then be moved to the third step in the funnel, which is the third web page. And for me, that web page simply looks like this. I'll show you what mine actually looks like. All it is, again, it's just a simple, plain web page, nothing sexy. It's called a thank you page or a confirmation page. It just says, woohoo, you're in. Here's what to do next. Now, in mine, I normally give this generic information. You're more than welcome to copy this for yours. Um, you just want to be saying to them, go and check your email inbox. That's where your stuff's been sent. It could take a couple of minutes. Um, please search for my name or my email address if you can't find it in your main inbox. A lot of people's ESPs, email service providers, will put new communication or new contacts in spam. So I do put that information in the confirmation. <laughs> and then I say, if you can't find your email, contact my team on X and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And I also just give them a little bit of a heads up regarding which location we're in. Remember, you are online. 
which means you're global. Not everybody will know what country you are based in. So, you know, if you're in the US and I'm in Australia, you're going to be asleep when I say, I haven't got my confirmation email. <laughs> so I just let them know, hey, we're in Australia. Now, you may like to give people something else to do at this stage. So for instance, in this particular example, on this particular confirmation page, I've encouraged them to come and join my Facebook group. So meanwhile, please join my Facebook group. Ta-da! All right, click button takes them straight to my Facebook page. And oh, for some reason that's blocked. I'm not sure why, I'm gonna to have to follow up and check on that one. So there we go. Those are the three steps of my Black Friday workshop funnel that you are currently a customer in because you're watching this. And this is a very typical funnel. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple more things you need to learn about funnels and setting funnels up. So we've got um, our settings for the overall funnel itself. In here, you're gonna name your funnel. This is the name for you so that you know what your funnel is. This is where you connect the overarching domain that you want this particular funnel to be connected to. And this is where you can choose what you want your path URL to be. So your domain.com forward slash something is called your path or your slug. I much prefer the word slug. It's way better, isn't it? <laughs> now, what you also have over here is statistics. Now I've only just published this, so um, be interesting to see. Oh, we do have some numbers. Excellent already. Very good. So this will show you in your statistics area. Remember, we're just in that main funnel settings. It's going to show you how many page views you've had. Have you got any opt-ins? What's your conversion rate? Woohoo! And how much money have you earned? And um, therefore, what it, roughly are your earnings per page view? Now, this is really smart data to start getting used to over time. Like if you're going to plan to do paid ads later, this is literally showing me that after I think it's 12 hours since I've published this, not even that, I don't think, no, it's not even quite 12 hours since I've published this. Um, this shows me already that I could start running ads to this. And as long as my ads are costing less than $4 per click, I'm going to be making a profit. So it gives me really good data around kind of what my marketing boundaries are when it comes to each of these different funnels. Now you can um, drop down and have further details on this. So for instance, um, in the uh, Black Friday workshop checkout page, I'd only obviously connected one product, which is this workshop. If I'd added multiple product products, um, it would actually show the data for each of those individual products too. So that's going to show you which ones are kind of your best sellers on that particular page and give you lots of sexy data to work with. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my main steps, the overarching steps area, because I just want to also show you that within each page, as I've said, you've got these other options. We've got our publishing options. This is where you choose the URL for that particular page. One of the mistakes that I used to make early on, and I know a lot of new people to funnels do, is they think that the main massive overarching settings path is the link that you share with your audience. When in, a, when in actual fact, the link you're sharing with your audience is actually the first step in your funnel, the web page link for that first sales page. So by clicking on your first main sales page step, going to publishing, this bit here is the main URL that people are going to be sent to, that you're gonna be putting in all of your marketing, that you're gonna be sticking up on social media. So this will be yourwebsite.com forward slash whatever URL you've chosen there. Now, tip of the trade, <laughs> make this quite short because when you're doing your promotions, if you're commenting on social media posts, you're gonna to wanna to be able to remember this off by heart. Now, I also do make a habit of just having a notes app on my phone where I just store all of my URLs and can quickly grab them if I'm commenting on social media posts, things like that. However, um, you know, by putting BF workshop, Black Friday workshop, I know that I'm going to be able to remember that. So if I am needing to just quickly give somebody that link off the fly, it's going to be nice and simple. You don't want a massive long gobbledygook pathway in there because it's going to just be ugly when you share it and very difficult for you to remember. Okay, so they are some of the main settings I just wanted you to be aware of. So I'm going to just go back to this all important checkout one. And in fact, instead of just calling this Black Friday workshop, I might actually call this Black Friday workshop checkout. Um, only we see this, by the way, where it says step name. Only you see that. It means what's the step name here, just so that you can visually know what page is what. 
<laughs> so I'm just going to give that a little refresh for a second. Excuse me while I take a sip of water. Um, I'm going to just take you back into this checkout page because I know this is the bit that most people get really confused about. Um, where we want to just reinforce, I want to reiterate to you, um, yesterday when I did this workshop recording, I pulled over. So over here in the checkouts area, this is where you get the checkout in if you've got a page that doesn't have a checkout on it. Uh, you go down here to checkout, and I personally like to use the two-step checkout purely because in the first step, i.e. this one, let me close this, you get their name and email address. When they click go to step two, now you've got their contact details whether they proceed or not. But basically, yesterday the mistake I made in my um, panicking about time is I was actually clicking on here and looking on the right hand side inside the page builder trying to figure out where I added my product okay um, we need to make sure at this in this place that coupon codes are allowed we have to do this bit inside this page builder we have to turn on coupon codes which is going to be the next bit I'll show you um, I also recommend by the way turning on sticky contact I always do that what does this mean it means if a contact is already a contact in your system it will pre-fill their details so again the more time you're saving people the more likely they're going to be to proceed with the purchase so that's something I always turn on so here I was yesterday <laughs> over here going where do I add my product where do I add my product okay it's not on the page builder when we add our products it is inside the funnel step menu okay so I'm gonna press back go back to the workshop checkout page click on products inside that workshop product page section and this is where our products go so let's now work out where we do our coupon code okay inside payments you are going to, if you want to do what I've done and add a purpose discount, a coupon code actually on the checkout to see if your conversions increase, go to payments, click on coupons. And this is where you can create as many coupons as you want and choose what percentage people get off and so on. So here, quite simple, create a coupon, enter the coupon name. So for example, mine was Black Friday, BF24, you know, so I'm just going to put BF25 just for the sake of this demonstration. Um, now, coupon name, this is only you, only you see this. So this is a note to self, basically. See this coupon name as note to self. So I'm gonna call this Black Friday Workshop um, 2025. <laughs> now, by the way, I'm gonna remove this as only for a demonstration. The actual code itself, this is the actual code you're giving to people. Press generate. Oh, no, sorry, don't press generate. That's gonna give, it, that's gonna give you a, a randomly generated code. So if you press generate, it's gonna give you something random to use. Coupon type. Now this is where, are you giving them a percentage off or a fixed amount off? So if I obviously, percentage speaks for itself. In my example, I gave them a 50% off. Maybe you might wanna give a certain dollar amount off, okay? So maybe you might say, use the coupon code BF24 and you'll get $10 off your purchase. So you choose, obviously, what's gonna work for you. And do you want a particular end date to your coupon? So you might say anyone who buys before X date will be able to use this coupon. This is where you can set the deadline or expiry of that coupon so that it happens automatically and you don't have to remember. The other thing you can do is let's pretend you've said only the first 10 people to buy this will get it. So you can ch uh, click the box that says limit the number of times this coupon can be used or limit it to particular products, um, limit to one per customer, for instance. So all of these different options you can select and you're just gonna simply then press create. And now because we turned on allow coupons on that checkout page in the funnel and we've created it here, we now have a coupon. How good is that? It works. So there's a really quick overview, guys, of the setting up a funnel process or a funnel checkout for any kind of product or service, how to add a coupon code, and just to kind of reiterate where those key points are. Now, again, I just want to remind you that over here on the knowledge base, if you click on your knowledge base, and I don't know how well this is going to be me doing recordings at the moment. <laughs> I'm using up so much of my internet space right now. There it is, it's there. Inside this knowledge base, there's really good videos and step-by-step -step instructions showing you exactly what to do. So for instance, if you wanna go in and learn a bit more about the funnels, 
click on funnel and we have this kind of funnels overview section. Please note these. If you go in the moment you're in funnels overview, there's a video here that's going to walk you through kind of all of the main navigational steps, what all the buttons mean and do, but you can actually go one step back to funnels overall. And now you've got funnel ideas. You've got how to play with it. What are the settings tabs? What do they all mean? How to actually build an ebook funnel? How do you add order bumps to your order form? Um, how do you change your URL paths? So there's all of these instructions in here and that all come with really clear step-by-step -step visual guides like this of exactly what to do next in what order. So this stuff is here for literally every single feature. Again, the other option to um, sell any product, if you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of creating a funnel, really quick and easy way is to just create an offer checkout. Inside the knowledge base, um, and this is called membership offers because in Techmatics, the word membership refers to anything in the courses and products area in the course area, okay? So when we say membership offers, we mean you've gone into the main menu of courses over here, da 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 da, da there, and we mean that you have, oop, I'm in storage library there, let's go back to courses. We mean that you have put something over here inside your product builder, okay? This could be a course, it could be a template, whatever it is that you're selling, okay? What we are talking about then is the checkout, the really quick checkout creation, which is a second or another or a different way of selling anything, okay? Instead of going to funnels, you would come to the courses area and click on offers, and you would simply press create, oop, create an offer, okay? You'd simply press create an offer. It makes a little quick and easy checkout for you related to that particular course membership or product that you've created. And it makes, um, gives you the opportunity to, by the way, add coupons and everything as well. So um, you basically just want to decide if you want something that's really fast, quick and easy, use offers. If you want to go super duper fancy and have a whole funnel sequence set up, then use funnels. Now, by the way, funnels, um, I prefer in the sense that you do get all of that, if I go back to the, the funnels page we had over here, in the fact that you do get all of this incredible data. Um, when you're using the funnel pages as a way of selling over the offers in the courses area, you do get those incredible statistics. And that's one thing I like. The other thing that you can do from having this option that you don't have, look at that, I've made a sale while I was talking to you. <laughs> Fantastic, um, is that you can now turn on these abandoned cart sequences. Okay, so you can actually now go in and create an abandoned cart automation for somebody that visited a particular web page but didn't actually buy anything. That is going to recover for you, according to data, up to 90% of your lost sales, which obviously is well worth it. So I'm just going to take you to an abandoned cart automation that I have for my content creation bootcamp. So I can show you one that's, it's still in, it's still in process of being created, but it's going to show you the most important step, which is the trigger. So the trigger is they've opted in to an order form. Okay. An order form is the language that's used for the checkout form that's in a funnel page. So you can see here, the workflow trigger is order form submission, order form submission. It means checkout submission. And then you're going to have the option here to add filters. So you'll have nothing showing add filters. And you're going to say the funnel or website is and then choose the name of that particular website or funnel. The page inside that funnel is the checkout page and the submission type is opt in instead of purchase. Okay. So in this particular two step order checkout form that you've seen, when they only complete step one, which is their name and email address, that's just an opt in. Okay. It's not a sale. It's a just an opt in only. That means, oh, I'm just going to cancel this so I don't muck around with it. That means that we have had somebody who's opted into the first page of our checkout, i.e. had an intent to buy but didn't. So what we can do now is we can now add in things like a little tag behind the scenes. So we might put a tag that is, for instance, abandoned cart. 
abandoned oopsie I did have a check did have one there by the looks of it abandoned cart for something that was one dollar or more excellent okay so I'm gonna press save um, you might want to add in any other tags that you might want to for instance you might want to put showed interest in something why why are we choosing these kinds of tags if I'm going to do any kind of marketing campaign in the future I might follow up a little bit stronger with people who have showed intent to purchase in the past. That's kind of why um, we might add tags like that in the future. So I'm um, just going to add tag abandoned cart. That's note to self. The action name is just the name that shows up here. Don't worry, no one sees that other than you. So now we have tagged them. Now, what happens next? Do we want to send them an SMS message? So you can type in SMS. Of course, you would have had to have added in your phone numbers here. But this is where I could send them an SMS saying, hi, first name. Oh, no, I saw that you were going to buy my X, Y, and Z thing, but you didn't. And see if I can find some way to incentivize them back. Maybe I send them an email over here. OK, so we can simply send an email again. Oh, no, I saw that you were going to buy X, Y, and Z, but you didn't. Another thing I really like to do when it's an abandoned cart sequence is leave a voicemail. Now this is a no ring text message voicemail. So you know if you miss a call and someone leaves a voicemail, well this particular one, it won't actually ring their phone. It will show that they had a missed call and it will leave this particular voice message. So what I do is I grab the voice recorder on my phone and I am very generic. We target it nobody in particular because this is going to be sent to everyone. So my voicemail will say something like, hi, it's Sarah Cordner here. Oh my goodness, I saw that you were going to go and buy my blah blah thing, but you didn't quite make it. Hope everything's okay just to let you know reason to come back okay <laughs> so that's also what you can do with a voicemail now of course just remember because it's a it's a phone you do need to have a phone line for that to work of course and of course it is um, a consumable so you would be charged for that text message going out at the text message rates shown on our techmatics.com forward slash pricing page just to make you aware of all of those details so that's your abandoned cart setup and trigger now final thing I'm just going to remind you of over here guys tech Techmatics.com. You know, not all of us are born to tech. I completely understand that. <laughs> so this is why we have really solid customer support behind the scenes. Three ways to get customer support. Number one, first port of call should always be either that knowledge base that I showed you. Okay, your knowledge base here, which is on the main menu of your dashboard, has all of these amazing guides for everything you could possibly imagine. That's the first place. Now, if you can't find anything in the guides, the next place you're going to go is the little purple question mark at the bottom right hand side of your screen and if you click on this chat button here you can chat to somebody and get some help all right now um, we are trialing just to give you the heads up and more like transparency here we're trialing a bot triage system temporarily just to see if the bot can direct you to the right answer um, at any time you can say speak to a real person and um, one of our real agents will actually jump on with you if it's something that's kind of a bit more of a complex question okay just to give you the heads up but there's always staff on there 24 hours a day of course bear in mind sometimes are busier than others <laughs> sometimes it will take a few seconds for one of our agents to jump on sometimes you might have to wait a couple of minutes depending on how much traffic they're dealing with at the moment <laughs> and finally 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 if you just need a grown-up to help you <laughs> we've all been there <laughs> then you can go to the support page on the Techmatics website techmatics.com forward slash support and there are two things you can do here First of all, did you know that we run completely free of charge training calls live with our tech experts every single day, twice a day? Did you know that? I bet you didn't. We do, and you do now. <laughs> so on this support page, if you click on free daily training sessions, it will open up a cal calendar and you will see that you can book onto one of those free training calls. Now I'm going to emphasize the training, my friends. This is not tech support. The tech experts, because this is a group training session, cannot go into any single one's person's account. It is not for troubleshooting. This is to ask about features. It's to ask, can you show me how one would set up a course or use a particular funnel or send an email? It's a training demo call, okay? This is not a tech support call, okay? Very important that you understand that because this is for group training. But if you wanted to get someone to show you to how to go through that web page build again or set up that funnel again, this would be a great place to say, hey, Farah or Fahad or whoever's running that training call, 
please could you show me how to do that thing <laughs> and they would then be able to do a demo for you if you still need help or oh, screw it you want someone else to do it for you we've got your back techies if you scroll down a bit further on the support page you've got a hire a tech expert option Yes, my friends, I literally give you the option to hire my very own employees. These are the people that I literally trust with my life. These people run my businesses, okay? These are the people that I depend on, rely on, love and trust completely. And I make no profit on this, guys. I pay my people very, very well. So what you can do for just 50 bucks is book them for an hour and they will spend an hour with you on a Zoom call and basically take over your screen and help you do whatever you want them to do for you in one hour. Now, when I say in one hour, I mean you whatever can be done in one hour. Okay, You cannot build a whole funnel in one hour. However, they could certainly get the basics done for you or the most important parts set up and then you can go around and play around with it afterwards. But basically, they will spend an hour on your system you can sit there, they're going to be training you at the same time as stuff's getting done. And you can say, I want that button here. I want that thing green. I want my logo over here. I want a picture of me here. I want this calendar connected, right? You're going to get stuff done for 50 bucks. Absolute game changer. I hope that helps. Enjoy the process. This gets easier and easier every single time that you do it. Enjoy and happy tech in.